Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome and good morning. Welcome to my video. For those of you guys that may not know me, my name is Casey Star Long and I'm popping my name up on the screen so you can see it. I want to welcome you to one of my Facebook Lives. So this is what I do every day. Um, I'm here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I call it today's breakfast. And right now we are in the midst of our 21 days of alignment. So don't worry if this is like your first or second time, you, you know, that's OK. You can just jump on in when you can get in. But what we're doing with our 21 days of alignment challenge is just really spending 21 days as part of a community to get in alignment in our area, in the three core areas. They are our faith, fitness, and finances. And so every day we go through the word of God. We're going through Psalm 119, which just happens to be the longest chapter in the Bible. But we are going through it and we're taking sections each and every day. And the reason why we picked Psalm 119 is because it's all about developing a love for God's word. So we're going to talk about how to fall in love with God's word on today. Because guess what? Before we are trying to get snatched in our bodies, before we're trying to, you know, have a lot of bank, make boss moves, whatever people say, that we want to first and foremost make sure that we're just in alignment with God's word. So I welcome you all. Thank you guys so much for coming in. I'm seeing you guys check in. Good to see you guys. Good morning to you, Levon and Lisa and Joni. Welcome, 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 Elder Patricia. So glad that you guys are here. Um, just a couple of announcements. So if you ever miss any of these broadcasts or maybe you're like, you know what, I just want more. I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube page. The link is right here on the screen. And I want to encourage you to subscribe. So whenever you subscribe and whenever you ring the bell, which is next to the subscribe button, you receive a notification every time I share a new video. In addition to these 21 days of alignment videos, y'all, I have other content as well. Some of you all know that I used to host a Christian radio show that aired every week. And so we began to upload those interviews. And so just encouraging people sharing their testimonies about life. And sometimes you just want to surround yourself with good news. So I just encourage you to definitely subscribe um, to our YouTube page. And also for those of you that are just kind of new and you're like, well, who is Casey? Who is this lady? Uh, my website is up on the screen and you can go there and there's tons of information about me. Okay. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and hop on in for our breakfast, for our word today. We are on day 15. Can you believe it? We're on day number 15. And so the passage of scriptures, um, the passage of scripture that we will focus on today, um, eight verses, seven, eight verses coming from Psalm 119 verses 113 through 120. So I'm going to throw it up on the screen in just a second. But I want to let y'all know that right before I came, right before I got on, um, I was actually in the gym today. I went to go work out today. So we're talking about getting in alignment. We're talking about <laughs> making sure that we are, you know, in position to be the most effective for the Lord. And so um, part of that is making sure that I am going to the gym and that I'm working out. Um, and it just makes me feel better mentally. So um, I'm going to throw up this picture, y'all. This is me right after the gym. I decided to just kind of do a little selfie just to kind of encourage myself, encourage others just for accountability. And so I was like, I got to go to the gym and hurry up, shower and come spend some time with you all today. So I'm just encouraging you. Are you going to get a workout in? So if you're going to get a workout in, whether you're working out at the gym or maybe you're marching in place, maybe you're going to go for a walk in your neighborhood. If you're going to get a workout in, just comment. I'm going to do something, you know, just comment, put something in the comments. So I just know that you're going to also kind of do some form of movement today. And guess what? It doesn't have to be something big, you know, just move. Maybe like during commercial breaks, you're like, OK, I'm going to march in place every time there's a commercial on TV, whatever it is, just move. 
I like Joyce Meyer because she talks about that God has given us all these joints and bones and muscles and they need to move. All right. We're not like uh, the tin man in the Wizard of Oz where, you know, he was just kind of like this before he got oil. You know, we're supposed to move. God, God wants us to exercise and move our muscles and our body. So just want to encourage you um, in that aspect. Our, we are going to have a we're going to have a special guest tomorrow. Her name is Nicole Peterson. All right. So she's going to be talking about our fitness because y'all know we always get the word in. And then a couple of times a week, I bring on special guests to speak to us about the fitness and the finances because we're getting in alignment. And so Nicole is going to be sharing her weight loss journey. As you can see, there's like a before and after picture of Nicole. Nicole lives here in St. Louis. Her and her husband, um, they are leaders in the church. They're pastors and she's an evangelist. So she's going to be sharing her tips. And so what I always try to ask um, our special guests to do is give us practical steps that we can take. Okay. So she's going to be sharing her um, thoughts. She's also going to be, um, she is a health coach. And so I'm sure she's going to talk a little bit more about that. So there may be some opportunities. If you like what she is saying, if God really touches your heart and you want to connect with her and be part of her health community. I don't know exactly all the details, but she'll share that with us tomorrow. So just be mindful about that. Also, um, in the next week or so, um, we're going to be starting um, a community here as well. Okay. And I'll be sharing more details about that as far as just accountability um, with our with our fitness and with our eating and just encouragement from um, that aspect as well. So I'll be sharing more details about that. So you can connect with um, us here or connect with Nicole or whatever, whatever God puts in your heart. But we just want to make sure that you're in alignment and that you are at your most optimum, that you are at your best. I shared a little bit this week about gaining during quarantine. And y'all, this is what I thought about as I was pulling out of the gym. And I'm going to get into the word. I, look, I'm I won't say I'm chasing down a rabbit hole right now. But <laughs> I didn't plan on talking about this, but I just want to say, like, I know that I've gained some weight and um, I it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, but I could see how it can become it can become comfortable that, um, you know, you feel heavy and, you know, I don't feel like myself, um, but I can see how it would be easy to just kind of just rest here and just say, well, you know, it is what it is. I can, you know, my clothes are tight, but they're not tight, tight. I can still fit in them. You know, I could just see how, um, I don't know if it's the enemy or the flesh or whatever can just kind of lull you into this place. I can see how, how the enemy could do that. Um, but that's why it's so important, at least for me to say no, because this is not the best place for me. I know that this is not the most optimum weight for me. I'm carrying extra weight when I'm at the gym and I'm jumping. I feel it on my knees. I feel it on my feet. I know that this is not God's best for me. And so understanding that this is not God's best for me, I know I can't stay here. And so that's where I really want to challenge you as we are you know, getting in alignment um, to not settle to not be lulled to sleep by the enemy. Well, you just picked up a little weight. It's okay. You've been carrying this weight, you know, for this many years. It's okay. You know, just, just be comfortable in it. No, I want you to be the very best that God has called for you to be. I want you to live a supernatural, super abundant life that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me to have. And so, you know, you know, the right weight for you, you know, you know, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? God speaks to us. You have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit reveals and says, you know, you could stand to lose some weight or you could stand to, you know, uh, change your eating habits. And so, you know, this is just a community of support, but it's also a community of truth. So I just wanted to share that a little bit about just being mindful and being discerning that the enemy would love to just lull us to sleep and be complacent and just say, well, you know, it's not that bad. I still look cute in my clothes. My husband hasn't said anything. No, you know what is the absolute best for you. And my prayer is, is that you will not stop at anything until you are at the best. 
my my whole thing is about look jesus died on the cross for our sins and he died he said in john 10 and 10 i came so that you can have an abundant life and so i don't know about y'all but we're going to be on this journey together in this community for abundant life that's why we we want to get things in alignment so we can have the abundant life when we're in position with god you know, with our fitness, with our faith, with our finances, then we are like rockets for God's kingdom. We are in position. We are most, we are the most effective. So just wanted to share that with you all today. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm seeing the comments. All right. Good morning to each and every one of y'all. Good morning. And so I'm seeing all of the comments. And so I'm also seeing that some of y'all are like, I, you're going to work out. So Look, Lynn, you got your workout in this morning at eight o'clock. That's awesome. That is phenomenal. Lisa is saying that she's going to work out. Awesome. Candace is saying she's going to get her workout at home today. That's right. Just do whatever you can, however it is. I love Elder Patricia Allen. She's like, I'm a march in place. Exactly. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Also, you guys, I want to just share um, something. I don't see Kim here. She might be watching the replay, um, but Kim Mosby, sometimes she comes on um, and she'll check in with the comments, but she has an organization called Reach and uh, she's actually going to be interviewing me on Thursday evening at seven o'clock. So I'm going to share that on my Facebook page. Um, she's going to be interviewing me or giving me an opportunity to share a little bit of my story. So um, I'm going to share that on my page. And um, I'll also try to have an announcement to post here tomorrow, um, just to kind of remind you guys, if you want to just tune in to our conversation on Thursday night, it's going to be on her Facebook page, but I'm also going to try and share it on my page as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is Nicole. She's sending me a message. She's said, okay. I have Thursday in my calendar again. Okay. So I'm going to follow up with uh, sister Nicole about what she just posted and um, prayerfully she'll be able to come on. Okay. All right. This is LaVon. LaVon is helping. Okay. All right. Got it. All right, you guys. So let's go ahead and jump in our word today. Psalm 113, it says, I hate those with divided loyalties, but I love your instructions. So again, our the writer of Psalm 119, he's speaking about the love for God's word. And, you know, it sounds kind of like a broken record because we've been going through this for the past, you know, 15 days. And the, the theme is the same. It's all about loving God's word. And so I'm going to give some tips about how to fall in love with God's word. But one of the ways is, is that I believe this psalmist, he's reminding himself about how much he loved God's word. He says it all the time. He says it all the time. And that's why we're going through Psalm 119, because we want to love the word of God. We want to fall in love with the word of God, that when we fall in love with the word of God, when God's word is implanted in our hearts, it guides our thoughts. It guides our actions. It helps us have wisdom as women and men of God. Um, it's the foundation of everything that we do. And so, you know, he's saying, look, I hate those with divided loyalties. I do not like people who are double minded. He's like, look, I basically I've made up my mind that I'm going to follow your instructions. And then he says, you're my refuge and my shield. Your word is my source of hope. Yesterday, I just went on a walk. So yesterday was voting day in um, where I live. And so I went to go walk to the polling precinct. It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't realize how hot it was. But as I was walking, excuse me, I was just having a conversation with God. And, um, you know, there are just some things that I'm believing God for. Um, and I, I've mentioned in the past that for whatever reason, I just really felt like God has not opened up the door for me to work a nine to five. Like, I just don't feel like there's the grace to do it. And there are just some things that He's called me to do as an entrepreneur. Um, and as a pioneer to kind of build systems and to build programs um, and to build streams of income, he's given me the ideas. But sometimes I look at them and I'm like, that's a lot of work. I don't know, you know, and self-doubt and all that stuff kind of comes in. But as I was walking and talking with the Lord, I was like, you know what, God, I'm not going to be 
disobedient. I'm not going to just go out in the flesh and just kind of get a job just so I can get some income. But God, you're my refuge and my shield. You are my provider and you are the source of my hope. So God, <laughs> you know, you're my source. I'm depending on you. I'm not going to go out and just make stuff happen, but God, I'm going to depend on you. And so have you ever been in a situation where you're like, if God doesn't do it, it can't be done. Where you know you've reached a point in your life where you're like, I'm not going to just try and make things happen in my own flesh or in my own strength, but I'm going to depend on God. And so this this passage really spoke to me because the writer is like, you're my refuge, you're my shield. Basically, God, you're you're my protector, you're my defender and your word is my source of hope. And so when I'm feeling challenged, you know, in my faith, when I'm like, oh, I don't know where this is going to come from or I don't know how this is going to happen. God, I need a new car. You know, this is real life. I'm like, God, I need this. I need that. Um, but God, you're my, your word is the source of my hope. So I'm going back to the word of what you said, that you'll supply all of my needs, your word in second Corinthians nine and eight, which says that you give seed to the sower, you know, you give generously. And because, you know, um, you give me, gener you give me everything that I need generously, I'm able to give to others. And it's like a cycle, you know, so just going back to the word of God for hope and, you know, for comfort. And so, you know, I just find myself just really having to live that verse out right now, walking it out and just being determined that, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you. Verse 115, it says, get out of my life, you evil minded people, for I intend to obey the commands of God. And you know what, ladies, you know, sometimes those thoughts that come in that whether they're people are, are usually lately, I would say that um, usually it's my own thoughts. It's, it's, it's my own thoughts. It's not, I don't have a lot of people you know, speaking negatively to me, you know, that's not, that's not my issue. Maybe you might have people speaking negative, negatively to you, but in, in any instance, you know, we can just say, you know, I intend to obey the commands of God, you know, like we talked about yesterday, just being determined, you know, that I'm going to, I'm riding this out that God, I love you. I'm riding things out. Okay. My husband is peeping in. Come on in, babe. They see you. They see me. They see you. Y'all see what I had to deal with? Take live. Just a sec. Live. Okay. okay. All right, I'm going to take care of the car. And okay. Get a haircut and I'll be on a conference call. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, babe. All right. Okay. Bye. Love you. Love, Love you. you. All right. Okay, y'all. Sorry about that. It's real life. <laughs> Verse 116, it says, Lord, sustain me as you have promised that I may live. Do not let my hope be crushed. And so this is just a great reminder for us, you know, that we are, we're dependent on God. God is our source. God is our provision. And I love the writer because the writer is real. The writer is like, God, I'm, I'm writing this out with you. I'm trusting in you. So God, do what you said you would do. And guess what? We know that God is a God that will not lie. He's not like man. We know that God keeps his promises to us. And so this is why it's really good to do this in um, community because we have each other to just hold on to. Um, we have the word. We're going through the word together. And also the writer is just a great example and a great template for us of what it's like to say, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you. Look, God, I know um, that you will sustain me. I know, God, that you will be with me every step of the way. For those of you all that are just now joining, we're talking about how to fall in love with God's word. I'm going to share some practical tips. But right now we're going through Psalm 119 and we're at verse 117. It says, sustain me and I will be rescued. Then I will meditate continually on your decrees. I want to let you know that when you find yourself in trouble, when you find yourself in problems, guess what? God is always there for us. He will sustain us. He will be there for us. It says, verse 118, but you've rejected all who stray away from your decrees. They are only fooling themselves. You skim off the wicked of the earth like scum. No wonder I obey your laws. Verse 120 says, I tremble in fear of you. I stand in awe of your regulations. So 
this is a word also that, you know, God is God is faithful, you know, and um, he protects those that are righteous. He sustains those that are righteous, those that are obeying his commands. And, you know, there are consequences for those who are who are not doing things according to the word of the Lord. And so because we're in this 21 days of alignment and we're talking about, well, how do we fall in love? with the word of God. There are just a couple of things that I just want to share with you, okay? And the first tip is to fast from what you like to fall in love, okay? That's to fast from what you like in order to fall in love. And what do I mean by this? And since, since we're talking about how to fall in love with God's word, you know, um, I'll give you an example that you got to make room. Uh, you got to make room in your heart for love. All right. Um, I mentioned at the very beginning of our 21 days of alignment. That for my husband, I think it is I don't know if it's been necessarily easy, if God has given him just like this great grace to study the word of God. But my husband can study the word of God for hours. Now, I don't I need to talk to him because I don't know if that's just a grace or if that is something that he's cultivated over the years where it's just like clockwork. Um, but I know for myself, it hasn't been like that. Now, there are some things that I can do that's just easy. Um, but like to study the word of God, I have to be really intentional because my mind wants to go do a lot of other stuff instead of just sitting and meditating in the word of God. And so God gave me a strategy and he's like, OK, that right now your heart is full of other stuff. Your heart is full of TV. Your heart is full of food. Your heart is full of Facebook. <laughs> your heart is full of doing stuff that you want to do. So what I need for you to do is to fast from some of those things. Basically deny yourself from some of those things so that makes room for me. So what that looks like for me is um, at eight o'clock at night, you know, um, that's my time to just study. So instead of watching TV like I would normally do or snacking or just kind of scrolling through Facebook, it's the end of the day. I am fasting from that so there can be room in my heart to fall in love with the word of God. So what does that look like for you? Then maybe you're like, I really want to love God's word. I really want to know God's word. I really want to memorize scripture. I really want to be better in this area, maybe there are some things that you need to deny yourself for a season. You know, maybe there's some space that you need to carve out for God, that in order to say yes to God, that's going to require you to say no to some other things, okay? It's gonna require you to say no to yourself. Maybe it requires you getting up an hour early in the morning where you're just able to spend time with God so how do you fall in love with God's word? One tip is to fast from what you like in order to fall in love with the word. All right. Sometimes we just need space. We need to clear out space and make God the priority. So the first tip, how to fall in love with God's word, fast from what you like. So put some of that stuff down to the side. It might be one or two things, whatever it is. So you can have time to fall in love with God's word. So you can have time to study. So you can have time to listen. So you can have time to memorize. So you can have time to review Sunday's sermon notes. All right. It's all about just carving and making that space. I think sometimes we think that um, falling in love with God's word, it's like, you know, we just fall in love. It just happens. Um, and maybe it does for some people. But if you if you are like me, um, this is one of the strategies that God has given. All right. That um, we fast from what we like in order to fall in love. OK, second step. All right. We got Pastor Low here. I knew that there were some men that sometimes sneak on in. So Pastor Low, it's good to see you. I'm glad that you are here and God bless you and um, Lady Alicia. God bless you. All right. Our second tip, y'all on how to fall in love with the word of God. Okay, this one, I'm not sure why it didn't show up on here, but it says it should be to make yourself comfortable, okay? I know um, Sister LaVon, she might be here helping me. 
all right, with my tips. Okay, I see she got tip number one, all right? Tip number two is you wanna make yourself comfortable, all right? And so what I mean by making yourself comfortable, I'm talking about making yourself comfortable um, to be able to study the word of God. You know, we're talking about how do you fall in love with the, with the word of God? So find you a place in your house that this is the place where you meet God. All right. I got two places right now. One place is right here. And I'm actually in the process of transforming this room. So if you saw some of the other videos, you may have noticed, like I would have stuff on this wall, a whole bunch of papers and stuff like that. Um, I had some diplomas and degrees in the back wall. All of that stuff is being taken down because I am about to transform this room. This room is really about to be my God space. And for the past five years since I've been married, um, this was initially my husband's uh, office slash library slash closet. Um, we got married. I came in and I made it a prayer room, but I would just kind of lay on the floor and then I began to post scriptures and stuff. But I'm about to really get comfortable and make it the way how I want to make it. So this would be my real first ever real prayer room. And so maybe you don't have a prayer room, but maybe is there a designated chair is there a designated table where you say, this is where I meet God and get comfortable. I know that um, when I get ready to study the word of God, I want to have blankets. You know, I don't know what it is like, you know, they call them tactile people. You, you'd like to just kind of be surrounded. I get comfortable, put some socks on, make some tea, whatever it is. We're talking about falling in love with the word of God and get comfortable so that you enjoy the time with God. Um, when I first started doing this, I was just kind of like, OK, well, it's eight o'clock. You know, let me just do it. But it, I wasn't enjoying it. So, you know, hey, we're, this is kind of like a romance with God. You know, get comfortable, get in some cozy clothes, have your books, have your journals, have your commentaries, whatever it is, your notes, because this is a conversation. And so you're falling in love with God. And guess what? It's hard to fall in love when you're uncomfortable, when you really don't want to do it. Get you some cushions, whatever it is, invest, you know, invest in this, make it a priority right now. You know, my husband's looking at me kind of crazy, but I'm like, you know what? We're going to invest in this. This is important. Trust me. You want a wife that's praying and spending time in the presence of God. So we're going to put some paint on these walls. We're going to buy some decorations. I want to get some furniture in here. I want to move stuff around. So look, just be on board with this, you know, and he is. But, you know, I had to think about, you know what? It's worth the investment. It's worth moving stuff. It's worth the investment to create a comfortable space you know, so that I can fall in love and be comfortable as I'm spending time with God. I don't want to sit on the floor anymore. I don't want to sit in a hard chair anymore. I want to be comfortable as I'm developing in a relationship with God. Okay. All right. We're talking about how to fall in love with God's word. Tip number three, have a for better or for worse mindset. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, um, as we are falling in love with the word of God, there are ups and there are downs. There are some days where I'm like, I really want to study the word of God. And then there are days where I'm like, I really don't want to. I just want to sit and watch TV and just hang out with my husband until it's time to go to sleep. But because um, I'm in a relationship, because I have this desire to, to want to love the word of God, I'm going to make time, right? Um, when I feel like it and when I don't, it's like a marriage. We're in covenant with God, but it's like a marriage, you know, for better or for worse. When you feel like serving him dinner and when the days when you're like, look, just fix it yourself, <laughs> you know, but having this for better or for worse mindset that regardless of what I feel, um, regardless of things are going really well, regardless if I'm really feeling like, you know, I'm vibing with God and I'm hearing his voice, you know, whether or not whatever the outside factors are. God, I'm just committed that I'm going to love you and I'm going to be um, obedient to this time. I want to make this time um, so that I can know your word and that um, we just have this time together. And so, you know, we're talking about how to fall in love with God's word. First tip is, you know, fast from what you like 
so you can fall in love with the word of God. That's basically saying, you know what, God, you are the priority. And so that if that means that I need to cut some things out of my schedule so I can spend time, so I can get to know you, so that I can learn and understand your word, then that's what I'm going to do. One of my goals uh, during this time is to memorize the books of the Bible. Y'all, I don't know the books of the Bible by memory. I'm, I am thumbing through the table of content sometimes or um, my last Bible was a Bible with the uh, the tabs, you know, which is fine. You know, there's no condemnation if you don't know the books of the Bible, but that's just been a personal goal of mine. And so God is like, okay, well, if you want to do that, then guess what? You got to make time. <laughs> you got to make time to memorize. You got to, you know, take some time away from something else so you can so you can do this. And so, you know, we're fasting from, from what we like so we can fall in love, okay? Two is we're making ourselves comfortable. Make yourself comfortable. Make you a space where you are, you know, just comfortable and um, ready to just receive from the Lord, you know, whether that's uh, redecorating, buying a piece of furniture, a desk. I know that's one of the things that is on my list for this room, being six feet tall. I need a good desk and I need an um, ergonomic chair. All right. So these are things that, you know, and I'm like, it's, I'm, I'm worth it. Okay. It's worth it. My relationship with God is worth it for these investments. And so, you know, I want to be comfortable when I study God, when I study God's work and three, have a better or for worse ad, um, mindset or attitude that, you know what, on the good days, on the bad days, whatever it is, I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to spend time with him. And I believe that, you know, there are different seasons where, where it might look different. There may be some seasons where, you know, in your life, you're able to spend just hours in the presence of God or, or maybe in other seasons, it's like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to give the first 10 minutes, you know, of my day to God. And then I got other stuff to do. And so there's no condemnation. It's really about the heart because guess what? If you don't have the heart, you could spend an hour in the presence of God and not be talking about anything. You're just like, you know, they are grudgingly. And so I believe that God, you know, he directs us and he shows us based off of our own lifestyle and what's happening in our lives, you know, just the time and, you know, what that looks like from day to day. So you guys, I pray that you've been blessed by these tips on how to fall in love with the word of God. So I wanna just ask you if this has been helpful for you, will you do me a favor? and just share it on your timeline. There may be somebody that I can't reach, but you can reach and they might be blessed through the content from today. And um, as always, y'all, we're gonna be back tomorrow with our great guest, Nicole Peterson. She's gonna be sharing her story of weight loss because part of our 21 days of alignment is to get in alignment physically, to get in alignment with fitness and faith in our finances. I am going to take some time and just go through your comments because I love to engage and I love to talk with you guys. But for those of you that maybe you're like, you got to go, you got to do some things in the house or you got to go back to work. I understand. So we're done with the teaching part and I'll see you tomorrow. For those of you all that want to stay and hang out and we can just chat, let's do it. OK, so I'm going to go through the comments. All right. OK, and so I see it. All right, let's go. Okay, good. Gwen said that this was very good. Gwen, I'm glad. I'm so glad that you're part of the community and I'm glad that this is helpful for you. And LaVon, thanks so much for just encouraging me. Teach and talk, Pastor Casey. All right, <laughs> then that's what I will do. Absolutely. I love doing this. I love, um, I love the idea of uh, doing this in community. Um, because I think it's just super easier to do when there's accountability and when you're doing it as a group. So um, that's just very helpful for me to be able to do that and to also be able to connect uh, with each and every one of you guys. So, all right, only God can do this. Yes, Candace, you're absolutely right. And Lisa, good to see you. Lisa, I'm looking forward to your broadcast, okay? <laughs> I'm looking forward to you getting on Facebook Live and for you to just share, you know, what God has placed in your heart. All right, uh, Sister Nicole, she's saying that she is gonna be with us tomorrow. Awesome, and Sister Chrissy was here. Um, some of you all, um, hopefully you saw the quarantine conversation that we had with Chrissy, who is a doula. 
and uh, she works with moms and all of that. And so um, thank you, Chrissy. Chrissy is also a Proverbs 31 woman. She has made her own insect repellent spray and she dropped some off to my house. So um, sappymom365.com, I believe, is her is her um, website if you want to order some of her products. OK. All right. And that's Chrissy Appleby. I'm putting her up on the screen. And so you can just look her up on Facebook if you want to buy some of her insect repellent spray. All right. OK. All right, I'm seeing all of you guys' comments and I'm so grateful that you guys are here. All right, looks like they're just comments, no questions. Maybe we'll do like a little Q&A, you know? Maybe we'll do that um, next week, all right? If there are questions or comments or something like that. Um, and so also, if you guys are interested in just kind of sharing on screen how these 21 days of alignment have helped you, and we can just talk. I'll bring you on screen and we'll just talk. We'll just have about five minute conversation where you're just able to say how this has helped you or some of the things that God has shown you. OK, if you're interested in that, let me know. You can comment or you can tag me and I'll follow up with you and we'll just schedule some time. We'll just do five minutes of just kind of what has God spoken to you during this time of um, our 21 days of alignment, because guess what? I don't have it all. <laughs> and God gives me a piece, but he also gives you a piece as well. OK, and so we can just have that conversation. That'll be great. So if you're interested in that, let me know. All right, y'all, I am going to go ahead and close out our broadcast for today. But I just want to say I bless you in the name of the Lord. May God bless you. Um, may he continue to just reveal and speak his heart to you. And I pray that you'll be diligent with the task and the assignments that he has called you to do. All right. Guess what, guys? The kingdom of God needs you. We need you um, in like your, your best space. We need you at the most maximum output. And I believe that begins with just getting in alignment. Um, with the areas that God has called us to get in alignment in. So, all right, you guys be blessed and I'll see you tomorrow with our guest evangelist, Nicole Peterson. Don't forget to share this if this has been helpful. Okay. All right, y'all. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.